we're already a very group-oriented communal engineering organization with a lot of open communication. And when we retooled our organization to put decision-making authority into the hands of our teams, mob programming made it very well with that approach because it's all about the team making communal decisions about how they're going to do their jobs and then owning those decisions as a group. It's focusing on consensus instead of focusing on conflict resolution. And we can have conflict. Healthy conflict is what arises when you have two perfectly valid solutions and you have to try and figure out which one of them is the one you want to use. Mob programming is having multiple people working on the same thread of work at the same time. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you know, everyone is in the same space. It doesn't necessarily mean that everyone's using the same computer, but it does mean that if a line of code is being written, that a group of people are all paying attention to what that line means at the same time. It does involve more engineers at a time, but you also have more eyes on the problem. You have more people talking about it. it really helped a lot of our you know earlier career developers get up to speed. They're part of the code, they're in the code, they have, you know, more than one person, you know, helping them and, and bringing them along as they go. I think that's pretty cool. The teams here are really small, so any new person coming into the team, that's going to change the entire dynamic of the team. Um, and that's a good thing, like, we hired them for a reason. We want to make sure that they feel included and um, that we're, we're ready as a team to bring them in and understand and acknowledge that that's going to change the team dynamic. Why don't you go ahead and kick it off? Being new to the team, I was in the driver's seat a lot more. And that is very, very nerve wracking when you're brand new to the code base. You have a lot more questions. And so you worry about slowing the team down because they have to take more time to walk you through and give you context for what problems you're trying to solve. The thing that I've learned is you really need to give the person who's at the keyboard space, you have to give them room to follow their thought process and to to struggle a little bit, frankly. Like it might seem like the advantage you get out of mob programming is that anybody who sees a problem just like immediately like brings it up. As soon as they see it, you mostly just want to give them space and, and give them positive feedback and let them build familiarity and, and confidence. What should I maybe stop doing? What should I start doing? And what should what am I doing that I should be doing? It's really nice to have everyone in real time. You pause, you stop writing code, everyone in real time can air their opinions or, you know, diverging opinions. Um, but ultimately, the person who's driving is the one who gets to make the final say. The most important thing that I learned once I started operating regularly in a mob is that most of my ideas are not good. Um, I have a lot of them, but, uh, and when you're working by yourself, you'll sort of take the first idea you get and you'll try to work with it. But when you have five smart people, all agreeing on the right thing to do, it's a very different situation. I'm on a team with four people who are upper, senior, or lead level, and I'm only maybe two years in working in engineering technology. Uh, like, I'm at the beginning. So for someone like me, working with four other people who know so much more and have so much more experience, I mean, mobbing's awesome because it forces everybody to slow down. Most people don't realize how costly and how, how many knowledge silos naturally are created individually and how much that costs a team looking across the development cycle. But once someone works in the mob long enough to have those ideas internalized and notice that they just don't have those types of problems anymore, then I think that will continue to spread because it'll just be more obvious to more people. I think it's, it's effective because you really um, get to use the team's collective intelligence that way. It's a good way to draw out everybody's ideas and to, to build in these sort of structural ways that everybody gets heard, everybody gets a turn at the keyboard. My biggest recommendation for anyone who's trying to start mobbing is to really picture these tools as you know, it's not a rock, it's Play-Doh that's not been dried out yet. <laughs> um, it's really something malleable. It's something that you need to iterate on and to really um, form to fit you. There are very few things that you're going to be the expert on anymore. Um, 
And so you just have to check your ego at the door and be willing to type, be willing to talk when it's not your turn. And, and it's a very interactive and interrupt driven workflow because you're, you're constantly in conversation. It's a really unique experience. It's very, very productive. And I would say that if you lose a little bit of velocity, you make up for it in quality and also in instant response because everybody already knows what is up. When you're doing it as your full-time development process, it can be difficult to objectively measure whether or not it's improving things. However, when you compare it to another team that has a very similar product with similar complexity and they don't use it and they use an alternate process, you can definitely see the differences. And that equates to higher quality software from the perspective of our customers.